Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me today for this cloud and seascape painting tutorial. The following colors are what I'm going to be using today, but you can use any other variations of these, black, light blue, violet, and white. All three colors are by Liquitex Basics Acrylic. I've also got a double primed and stretched 9x12 canvas and a number 30 filbert brush that I'm going to be using. And we're just going to start by getting the canvas a little bit wet. And that's gonna really, really help blend the paint across the canvas. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of black, a little bit of light blue violet. Now you only wanna have just the tiniest amount of black on your brush because black is very, very strong. So way more of the blue and less of the black. I'm gonna start across the very top of the canvas and just blend nice and smoothly across. And then I'm gonna add a little bit on the bottom as well where we're gonna have our beach and seascape. Okay, the next thing I'm going to be doing is picking up just a little bit more of my titanium white and a little bit of my light blue violet. I'm going to add a little bit down here right above the sea and then just a little bit more just where we finished off uh, on the sky at the top. Okay, for the next step, I'm going to continue using my number 30 filbert. I'm going to take a little bit more of my blue violet and just a tiny bit of that black. I'm going to use the end, the shape of my uh, filbert brush here to create those puffy looking clouds. And it's just like a little half circle. So just little uh, dabs, pulls and swirls here and there. And just with this big brush for now, but then I'm going to be quickly switching over to a smaller filbert. And I want you guys to know that you can use any other size if you don't have the exact same size of brushes that I'm using. And if you're not sure about what those are, you can just uh, leave a comment with a question below if you don't have any filbert brushes and I can offer um, some more suggestions. So I've got another filbert brush here. I'm now going to take some white and come underneath and partially over where I left off with the other colors and the other brush. I'm going to soften and kind of blend that out so that they kind of just disappear below into the plain canvas. So a little bit more white down here as well. I'm using thick amounts on the tip of my brush with no water at all. Just pulling some uh, streaks down for some gentle movement in the water and white caps on the ocean. Adding more white here now. Thick amounts again. I really want this to stand out and be nice and bright. So bright, bright highlights. Washing my brush out and going back over for a little bit more black this time and less blue so you can see here just how dark it is. And I'm starting about a third of the way down uh, over top of the other cloud. And I'm going to come down and add those same types of shapes. And you don't have to try really hard because the filbert brush already has that shape to it. So you just kind of want to wiggle around uh, and kind of tap to get that shape, make it nice and uh, kind of crooked and wiggly looking so it doesn't look like you tried too hard and it doesn't look like a pattern. You want it to be uh, really random looking and that's going to make your clouds the most natural looking. So after I apply the shape, I soften and dry brush below and then I go around and add a little bit more to some other clouds. I'll add a few more clouds here and there just with this color and then I'll once again soften. Sometimes I'll add a little bit more blue. Now this is personal preference. This isn't something that you have to do or necessarily need to do. Uh, but if you want to have more color in your painting, then you can choose any color that you want. It doesn't have to be the blue I'm using today. You could choose Prussian blue, uh, cobalt blue, <laughs> cerulean blue. There's so many different blues and purples as well. Or you could also just leave it uh, gray tones. And so I'm just going to come here and just keep layering and starting new clouds with a few spaces below. Uh, so you kind of see those peaks of light and highlights and the other clouds look like the light is filtering through them. So it's kind of like dark, light, dark, light, and then they gradually get lighter. So you're blending those out in between. So it's not just completely full contrast. You're having those mid-tones and gradually shading down into the next cloud. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a few areas where I'm gonna apply heavier paint um, and just saturate a little bit more. And this is gonna help create more depth and also contrast and make my, my sky and my clouds look a little more 3D. 
Um, so just taking a little bit more black sometimes or a little bit more blue. Not straight black though, I'm always having a little hint of white and blue in my brush just so that it, the clouds don't look black. If you really want to create a stormy, very sort of scary, moody sky, then you can definitely play up on your black and your dark colors a little bit more for that and that'll instantly give you that look. So I'm going to go over and just add more layers of those little half circle puffy <laughs> cloud tops and then just gently brush over a small amount of blue and that kind of gray color that I made with the white, blue, and a little bit of black. And then here I'm just softening with a little bit of white, and then I'm going to pull and start creating some kind of uh, sun ray effect. So this is the first step in doing that, just brushing over back and forth. And then I'm going to take a little bit more on just on the very tip of my brush so I can create these thin, thin, narrow lines down here for shadows. Um, the shadows are from the depth in the water. Uh, and what's going on underneath the water, but they're also coming from the dark clouds above. Now I have a number two round brush that I'm taking some titanium white with and adding some little squiggly um, shapes, just smaller half circles. They kind of look ruffly and it's really easy and fun to create these. This gives you so much depth uh, in your clouds. You could leave the clouds just as they are, but I'm here to teach you guys, so I always want to show you as much as I can in my tutorials. Even though this is a quick tutorial, you're going to be learning so much. So I'm just going around and I'm layering, adding more and more layers of these little ruffled types of lines and, and tops of the clouds. So a layered look in a painting is really easy to create. All it does is take time and the right brush stroke. Um, you can use different brushes for this. If you have a really small filbert brush, you can use that or a liner brush. Um, you can even paint with a fan brush um, or even using the corner of a flat brush. So I don't ever want you guys to think that if you don't have the same brush I'm using, you can't paint along. Um, it's really, really not about that. I want, I can't emphasize that enough. I want you guys to paint with me no matter what you have. When I first started out painting years ago, I used whatever I could find. And at that time we were doing house rentals and I just used house paint. I even painted on chunks of drywall that we had around the house. So I never let that hold me back and it made me become a better artist because I had to do things. I had to try extra hard <laughs> using um, poor materials that weren't, you know, artist grade. So if you guys aren't ever sure about what types of paints and brushes and, and all that, um, don't hesitate to leave a comment or question below. I'm happy to connect with you and offer my advice. I love teaching and inspiring. So I'm just talking my way through all these little layers. It's just all the same um, technique here and brush stroke that I'm applying. And I've got a few other in-depth cloud tutorials, but they're really simple. So there's one that's really popular right now, and it's three easy steps uh, to clouds. And you guys are really liking that one. And if you're watching now and listening, and you're like, I haven't seen that video, Joni, I'll leave a link below, and you can click on that link. It'll take you directly there, and you'll learn a lot in a short amount of time. Okay, so for the next step, I'm just going to take a little bit more of my blue, my black, and then soften with a little bit of white just in this area right here because I, it's so just all the same color there that nothing is, is really showing up or standing out. So I need to build up uh, my colors and my sh shadowing and shading there so that I can add some highlights and sun rays later. So just taking those darker colors again, like I said, a little bit of light blue violet, my round brush as well, and a little bit of white. I'm also going to add a little bit more highlights down in the water. I'll be adding a little bit more of my white, uh, a little bit of blue, and it's really up to you guys how much color you want in this painting. So uh, you could add less than what I'm adding here and it'll still look really pretty. But just remember that you really need to have some shadows in order for your highlights to stand out. And you also need some, you know, vice versa, you need highlights in order for you to have some shadows so light and dark they need each other um, whether or not you choose to have really bright highlights or really dark shadows that's completely up to you but you'll know if you don't have enough because nothing will stand out in your painting now sometimes that can happen if you're using too much water um, and sometimes that can happen if you have too much paint loaded in your brush so you can't really add highlights over top of really thick paint. You're gonna to have to use less paint or wait for that first layer to dry before coming in with your highlights. Um, so I hope that helps you guys. I think that's a really helpful tip that I just mentioned right now because a lot of you 
uh, you know, send me questions, uh, whether it be through Patreon or here or our Facebook group. And that's one thing that it's really, really hard to uh, demonstrate how much water I'm using. I can't measure the amount of water I'm using on my brush. Um, it comes with practice and you're really not going to get it until you put the work in and practice and you've got to paint like crazy. You've got to paint and paint and then you're just going to get a feel for it. Like learning anything in life, you have to do it lots, right? Before you get good at it. Um, my tips and tricks can really help get you there quicker for sure, but it's you <laughs> that's going to have to do uh, the physical painting and practicing. And then, you know, you'll develop your own unique style of doing it. Maybe you'll develop something and figure something out that's easier than what I'm showing you here. Um, me being a self-taught artist, I never went to school. I stayed at home with my kids and, and just painted for fun. It ended up turning into a career for me, but I had no books or internet or anything to go by. I just wanted to paint and I learned and just taught myself how to do everything. So I've got some unique stuff here to offer you on my channel that you might not see somewhere else where somebody uh, has learned what they're teaching you from school. So I'm just adding more shadows, more highlights. Note when I'm adding, after I told you guys, if you have too much paint on your brush, you're not going to be able to highlight. So if you have a lot of the highlight color on your brush, but the shadow color underneath is thin, you can apply a thick coat of highlight, but you can apply thick paint to thick paint. Um, unless you're working on an abstract and you've got thick modeling paste. Um, but I'm just gonna start going over these sun rays that I'm doing here now. I'm using another Filbert brush. If you're just a beginner, you might want to switch to or choose a flat brush um, because it's got more of a, a square and straight edge to it. Uh, with filbert brushes, you can kind of um, have to work on getting the lines straighter because they've got that natural curve to the end of them, right? But you can definitely achieve uh, sun rays uh, with a filbert brush like I'm doing here. So for the sun rays, you just want to have less paint and make sure that it's transparent. If you want, you can switch over to zinc white. Uh, zinc white is uh, transparent, uh, but the titanium white is nice and bright and it is um, opaque, so it's not see-through. Um, but you could easily make it see-through, like I mentioned before, just adding a little bit of water. And you want to create a really, really bright highlight underneath or right next to your, your darkest area, like I did at the top left here, and then add your high, your your sun rays right under those bright bright highlights that's going to give us that feeling of we know the sun is right there right behind that cloud now i've washed my brush out and i'm taking just a little bit more of my black and blue a little bit of white in there and making a dark charcoaly bluey gray type of a color and that's just going to create more shadow and make my sun and bright highlights there uh, stand out even more then I'll come in with just a little bit of white on the very corner tip of my brush and add a few little half circles. So I've got some neon paints here. I've got a little bit of uh, luminous uh, neon yellow warm that I'm using. The brand is by Holbein. Uh, they're wonderful paints. And I'm adding just a little tint. I'm tinting my white with that to give this a little bit of warmth. And what a difference that makes. So it looked nice before. Uh, but just by tinting your white a little bit and warming it up, you really change the feeling and the temperature of the painting. As well as down here. Now, I love, I'm a sucker for the Caribbean and uh, turquoise water. So I just went over with a little bit of bright aqua green turquoise to finish this painting off. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining and please subscribe to my channel for more. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody.